Oh, and today we're going to be doing Cash Flow Quadrant for Robert Kiyosaki. Heroes become villains. Every few years, a new financial guru appears and seems to have some new magic formula for wealth. In the late 1970s, it was the Hunt brothers who tried to corner the silver market. The world initially applauded their genius, but almost overnight they were hunted down as criminals because so many people lost money after they followed the brothers' advice. In the late 1980s, it was Michael Milken, the junk bond king. One day, he was a financial genius, but right after the crash, he was tracked down and sent to jail. Individuals change, but history repeats. Today, we have new investment geniuses. They are all over TV, the internet, and financial publications. Some even have obtained celebrity status. Warren Buffett is touted as a near god. When he buys something, everybody rushes in and buys what he buys. And when Warren Buffett sells, prices crash. Money follows him freely. And if, if there is a major market correction in the near future, will today's financial heroes be tomorrow's hated villains? Time will tell. In every up cycle of the economy, there are heroes. And in every down period, there are villains. Often they end up being the same people. People will always need witches to burn or conspiracies to blame for their own financial blindness. History will repeat itself, and again, a great transfer of wealth will take place. When it does, which side of the transfer will you be on? The left side or the right side? In my opinion, people will simply fail to realize that they are in this large global game. A virtual casino, casino in the sky. But no one ever told them that they are important players in the game. The game is called... Who is indebted to whom? Be the bank, not the banker. When I was in my mid-twenties, it dawned on me that the name of the game was to be the bank, but that didn't mean to get a job as a banker. My advanced education was about to begin. It's during this period that my rich dad had me look up words like mortgage, real estate, and finance. I was beginning to train my mind to see what my eyes could not. He encouraged me to understand the game, and when I learned the game, I could do what I wanted was what I found. I decided to share my knowledge with anyone who was interested. He also had me read books on the great leaders of capitalism, people such as John D. Rockefeller, J.P. Morgan, and Henry Ford. One of the most important books I read was The Worldly Ph Philosophers by Robert Hellbroner. Who want, for people who want to operate on the B&I side, his book is a must read for it traces the great economists of all time, starting with Adam Smith, who wrote The Wealth of Nations. It is fascinating to look into the minds of some of our most important philosophers, the economists, the, the economists. These people interpreted the evolution of modern capitalism over its brief history. In my opinion, if you want to be a leader on the BNI side, a historical view of economic history is important to understand both to understanding both our history and our future. After the worldly philosophers, I recommend reading The Creature from Jake, Jaco Island by G. Edward Griffin. Paul Zane's Pilsers, Paul Zane Pilsers Unlimited Wealth, James Dale Davidson's The Sovereign Individual, Robert Preacher's The Crest of the Wave, and Harry Dent's The Great Depression Ahead. Well, Hale Broners gives you insight into where we have come from economically. The other authors give their views on where we are headed. Their contrasting viewpoints have been important. They allowed me to see what my eyes could not. By reading books like these, I have been able to gain insights into the ups and downs. The cycles and trends, the cycles and trends of the economy. A common theme in all of these books is that one of the biggest changes of all is right around the corner. Okay, so I hope you liked that. If you did, please like and subscribe. Bye.